Every workshop needs a reliable way to hold things. I want a vise to be fast and easy to clamp and unclamp. I want it to hold things securely, and I want it to work in all sorts of situations. This vise checks all those boxes, and it can be made from a few pieces of construction lumber and a little hardware. And the most interesting part is this vise is perhaps 400 years old. Not this exact vise, but this design has been around for at least as far back as the 1600s when it was described by Joseph Moxon in his book, The Art of the Joinery. The reason this design has endured so long is because it is nothing short of ingenious. While you can fasten this to the front edge of your bench if you want something more permanent, it's perhaps best used as a portable vise that can be clamped on any portable work surface when you need it and then put away when you don't. But whether you go with the portable or the permanent option, this vise has a couple significant benefits over the more mainstream version attached to benches today. For one thing, when it's attached to the top of a table or bench, it raises your work up a bit so you can work more comfortably. This is so much better on your back and your eyes. And this vise was specifically designed for cutting joinery. Unlike many modern versions that have a screw or guides in the center, the Moxon twin screw design allows a workpiece to pass through the jaws and extend toward the floor. This makes a lot of work, such as making boxes and cabinets and drawers so much easier. There are lots of Moxon Vice videos out there, but this one is different. It has a clever design that solves some key problems. Normally, the threaded rods are affixed to the back jaw, and they stick out past the front jaw where they just get in the way when the vise is closed. The obvious solution is to attach the handles permanently to the rods and then have the whole thing screw into the back jaw but it becomes very difficult to align the embedded nuts in that back jaw in a way that allows smooth operation without binding in the threads. This design solves that problem by means of a square nut and a homemade flange that allows everything to self-align when the vise is assembled. It's very clever, very easy to make, and so inexpensive. It just makes a lot of sense to have one around the shop, and you'll be glad you do time and again. So let me show you how to make it. First, you'll need a set of plans. Thankfully, you can get these for free. I'll put a link in the video description and I'll pin it to the top of the comment section below. The plans are very detailed with step-by-step -step instructions, lots of photos and drawings. They really make the job easy. So download a set at the link below. Then you're gonna need a little bit of hardware. I've got two eight inch long pieces of three quarter inch threaded rod, two square nuts, two washers, two bushings, and two crank handles. You can try to assemble this hardware yourself. I suppose you could even make some sort of knobs or cranks on your own. But I highly recommend using the other link that I'll place below to a kit that contains all of it ready to go, including these really nice cast iron cranks for a really reasonable price. The kits are assembled by a small family business in Missouri that I partner with because they're just great people and they come up with so many affordable solutions for small shops just like this one. But as tends to happen whenever I make a video like this, these kits will probably go fast. So grab one while you can. And if they do sell out, get on the wait list. You'll be glad you did. There's no reason for me to show you every step in this build because it's all covered in the instructions. But let me show you some of the key highlights. You'll need a couple chunks of wood. The plans will tell you the dimensions. This is just construction lumber. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Most of the holes you see are straightforward. Again, the locations are in the plans, but you'll notice two of them are elongated. This is done by simply boring two holes next to each other and then chiseling out the waste in between. The oval shape keeps the jaw from binding on the main screws. The bushings are pressed into another set of holes, and on the other side of those, you'll mount some homemade flanges. These are also simple to make. I've laid out the dimensions of two flanges on this chunk of pine. I've drawn X's in each square to help me mark the location of the holes that I'll need to bore. Each flange has four small screw holes in its corners. Then I bore a final large hole through the center of each one. The next step is done at the table saw, or you could use a router table with a straight router bit. I'm using a regular saw blade. No dado set is necessary. My first pass is just slightly off center. Then I rotate the piece 180 degrees and I take another pass, slightly widening the groove. Now I move my fence a small amount closer to the blade and I make two more passes. Cut, rotate, cut, move the fence. Cut, rotate, cut, 
move the fence. I'm gradually widening the groove until my square nut slips inside. Not too tight, you'll want a little room for error. Finally, the two flanges can be separated and cleaned up a bit if you want them to look nice. Then they attach over the bushing holes with screws. I like to use some cork rubber on one or even both of my jaws. Cork rubber is a durable adhesive backed material that prevents marring of work pieces and it adds some grip. It's really nice. I'll link to it below as well. The crank handles go on the threaded rods with epoxy or better yet, the red type of thread lock. Then it's time to assemble. That's really all there is to it. Who knew it would be so easy to make such a useful workshop fixture? It almost feels like cheating. Build one this weekend. You'll thank me later.